So Pat Condell has a new video up called God or Nothing, and it's a good video. People should check it out. I do have issues about it. I feel like he's playing some sort of odd game here where he's suggesting that the only two options are to either buy into some kind of outdated, dogmatic relic of organized religion, or to believe quotes in nothing. That those are the two sort of options that are available to people. And that if, if you are a theist, you're a theist of some sort of religious dogma sort, or you, if you're an atheist, your notion is basically of nothing. He, he really doesn't seem to address the issue of complexity. Now, admittedly, so much in the video is right. Are we all scared little animals? Yes. Do we have limits on our ability to think about things? Yes, I think that's the point. I want to get at that a little bit more. But his notion of truth seems so, so literalist, so unfortunate. Instead of trying to understand ancient, classic, religious texts as ancient people's attempts to try to understand themselves and their own psychology and the nature of their conscious experiences, it's as if he aligns with the dogmatist uh, uh, interpretation of it just to cast it as a foil so that then he can throw nothing as the only uh, conceivable alternative to that. And I don't think that that's true. So think about it this way. Imagine somebody says to you, oh, you know what? There really were no three little pigs. Yeah, in fact, there was no big bad wolf either. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't try to build your own house out of bricks. Now, obviously, right here, I'm not talking about houses or bricks. People who don't know how to understand what a metaphor is, well, of course, they're going to be grasping around very, very confused when they try to understand the meaning of a religious text. I think what I would want to do is try to get at this issue of truth. It goes on, I, it's about five minutes into his video or so, he starts talking about truth and how no one has the truth. And I agree, we're, we're all little animals and anyone who claims to have more truth than what an animal can claim by just chattering its noises and hoping that those make sense to it to enough to navigate its future in a beneficial way. Anybody wants more than that, they're probably playing a, a, a three-card Monty on you. Okay. Still, you know, there's a great passage in from Star Trek. I don't know if people that are Star Trek fans, but there's a, a part where Worf is talking about the rivers being formed by Kalos's blood back in his home planet. You know, and at one point his son Alexander says, you know, these stories that you tell me, are they true? And Worf looks at him and he says, I find new truth in them all the time. The question is, can we learn how to find truth in some of these statements? I want to throw out here some of my own, a series of really quick kind of allegorical mythological stories that I think are intended to give a, a spirit of, I guess, of, of religious orientation without any organized religion. It's a sense of spirituality grounded within our bodily experience. No dogma, no fantastical miracle, no divine intervention, no virgin birth, no life after death, none of that. But still, let's take these cases. Okay, first, I've said this before, I think that life is eternal. And when I say life is eternal, I mean that life is all anyone has ever known. That is, each person, they come into the world, and by the time they come into the world and find themselves, by the time you come to conscious self-awareness, you'll find you've always already begun and you already have a history. You also have a future outstanding. In some way, there's some projected not yet. There's still goals. And even with regard to your own death, there'll be, I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying. You'll never get to, I'm dead. If you get to, I'm dead, you're not yet. To that extent, life is all anyone ever knows. Life is eternal. Let me try it another way. Sometimes we could say it in the physical universe. The physical universe doesn't seem to have an outside. Now, when you get to the very boundary, the outside of it, well, what's on the outside of that? Well, we say nothing, non-space. Well, what's on the outside of that? See, every time there seems to be a paradoxical sense of the universe not having an outside, but it's very similar to the way that we, for ourselves, don't have a head. Yeah, when you look around, you can see everyone else. They all seem to have a head but you. That is, where your face isn't, the world has been made room for, right? Yeah, everyone else, they look like a figure against a background, but you, for yourself, 
you're the way the world worlds itself, right? And, and this is another way to say it is if the universe itself doesn't have an outside, it's because the back of your head is like the equivalent of the universe's outside. The universe is all inner space. And I think part of the problem is that people, and you mentioned quantum mechanics there, I give you that, Pat, that was, uh, I think that was an important point, that relations between things are as real as things. That is, if I take these two uh, pens here right now, I can say this one is in front of this one, now this time this one is in front of this one. Now when I'm doing that, I'm here represent cognitively, my neuronal system is both representing these pens and I'm also somehow mapping this relation. But we don't want to say that the relation is there independent of the consciousness. I mean, no one could be in front of the other independent of the consciousness. Now, I think we can imagine that these pens are here independent of consciousness. Now, maybe people can't. Maybe some of there's physicists and they say, no, there's just energy patterns and there's just swirls of electrons and things going on. But I think even to those people who do want to believe that there are physical objects, objects seem to be there independent of people and in that sense could be represented by the mind. But relations, particularly relations of in front of, behind, relations of distance, those might be being represented, but they're also being accomplished by a consciousness. I think there are basic mysteries of the universe. There are, there are basic sensibilities about what it means to be a self-conscious place and moment of the cosmos. Each one of us, every night or day, every 24-hour every period, right? each one of us, we give up on all worldly cares. We recess back into the earth and we become vegetative, dreamless sleepers, erasing all boundaries between geography, between distances, between one another. And then each of us, we wake up. We wake up again and we face the world. Unfortunately, too many of us believe that the self we are in wide awake existence is the only being that we really are. We seem to cover over the fact of dreamless sleep. We seem to cover over the fact that we are a place and moment of the world that allows for awakeness only as a momentary accomplishment. I think the more that people could deal with the very humble paradoxes of existence, the degree to which the eternal itself has found a way to cheat death, what it does is it haunts itself as another by doing bodies that live and die. Each one of us is a kind of place and moment of the cosmos, haunting itself as another. We're dreamless sleepers that are part of the earth. The more that we could, again, address these sort of simple, very humble paradoxes of earth, the more that we might be able to move toward a notion of God that could be intelligible in the 21st century. You don't need fantastical windy poops and fairy dust and all kinds of other stuff. I think what you need is an openness to see what the absolute mysteries of science are revealing and how the imagination itself can be liberated if we come to terms with... Um, I guess the mystery of all of this, but the way that the mystery seems to have clues about the origin of intelligence. Let's just take this as the maybe the way to, to end this. To those people who want to say that intelligence just emerged, well then that means in some way life was always meant to be intelligent. What does that mean? <laughs>